Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Chronicles of a Nonprofit. Today is September the 4th. Happy holiday for those who celebrate in America Labor Day. You are now tuned in to Chronicles of a Nonprofit. I'm Dr. Darina Shine, and I am your host today. I wanted to do a podcast that was going to be pre recorded because I wanted to just let everyone check the audio or video when you are available. Because I understand you may be sleeping in, you may not be able to make the class or the podcast. So yeah, so this is for everyone. This includes my YouTube community, my Facebook community, as well as my podcast listeners. So welcome, welcome, welcome. (laughs) the very first thing you see before you is a thank you. Chronicles of a Nonprofit has made in the last, from August the 21st to August the 27th, 581 viewers. So I thank you guys for tuning in, for sharing, for liking, for commenting. These are the algorithms that keep these videos coming to you in your upcoming list of videos that YouTube recommends or Facebook recommends or the podcast recommends. So what I do is I do my podcast and then I cut a portion of that, and I upload it for those who want to get a general understanding of what it is we do on the one-on-ones, okay? So yeah, 581 views, um, and I'm really appreciative with three subscribers, new subscribers, thank you. And we also on Facebook received 2,900 views, that reached and 74 interactions. So those are considered emails, texts, phone calls coming streamlined from Facebook. So I thank you all for being so connected to me. You're making the Chronicles of a Nonprofit become its greatest version. Now, in that, let's just see what happens in September. You know, uh, like I said, I I will do a podcast, whether it's one person or a thousand. You know, So I am super, super greatly appreciative to all who tune in. So today we're going to talk about a topic that I think is highly important in business. And, you know, this is a great time, Labor Day. Labor Day involves staff, volunteers, administration. It involves those who are steel workers, frontline workers, medical workers, health industry workers, uh, people who do things in the background, behind the scenes, people who are on call right now during a holiday season, a holiday day. Some people are still on call waiting for a job to be called to go to work. So labor means everything when business is involved. So I felt it was very important for me to get on here and share with you guys what um, what I wanted to share today. So here is a email that I received. I hope I'll be able to do this real quick for you guys. And if not, if you can't see it, it's okay. Um, I will just read it. So this gentleman, he, Brett, you know, he writes that uh, he is a small business owner and that he has an a moral an ethical issue that showed up for him. And basically this moral and ethical issue has to deal with relationships within business, as you can see. So Brett, thank you so much for being a part of what we do here. Um, so you asked the question, what is the moral 
an ethical thing to do when you're interested in working with someone who you are doing small business with? And that's a great question. How do we become professional without being too friendly? And what is the scale? What balances the scale there? So when we build relationships with other people, it's about showing who we are, okay? It gets complicated sometimes when we involve business with it, okay? Every company has a system that explains their sexual harassment lawsuits um, process, how to go about, you know, handling a situation when a person is out of control or whatever. But as a boss... And this is to my entrepreneurs that are in the house, okay? As a boss, you're running your own company. You're running your own company. And when you do that, what happens is you kind of call the shots. And a lot of times our emotions can get played up in that. You know what I mean? Our emotions can make us feel like, oh, it's okay. Let's go to dinner. Let's uh, prioritize this relationship over another relationship. But the reality of that means this. People are going to judge that character, Brett. They're going to say, well, you treat this person, this contractor a little different than you do me. You know, so then it becomes unethical. It becomes unprofessional. And uh, so we need to literally set boundaries on how we're going to handle all people. Remember, I told you entrepreneurs and learners, the key to the expectation behind processing how we treat all of our clients, if we do a spectrum from zero to 10, how will you treat all individuals, no matter what day to what time of day, where you are, what you're doing, if it's a client or an administrator, how do you treat everyone involved in that relationship with you that day? So my level is six. Six is kind of midway. I'm very aware and understanding of everything, but I'm very open to what's coming at me. So I'm paying aware attention. I'm giving attention to everything that's being said, how it's being said and all that. Body language and everything, right? Then based upon the way that the relationship goes, I can either lower the spectrum under six or I'm going to raise it higher. But six is where I'm at. I'm already on point. I'm already on activation, (laughs) regardless of who comes in the door, regardless of who calls, regardless of what text comes through, regardless of what email shows up. So I suggest that that is one of the ways that you handle yourself with everyone, even if you're attracted to someone. You handle everyone in that same realm. So as a boss, we make call the shots. So me, myself, personally, I run small events, marketing companies, um, and their intricate works for the past maybe 10 years. And because of the small size and the creativity that I run into, I work closely with employees, freelancers, temporary staff, customers, and clients, and volunteers. I've even brought friends to help me out with different projects. So through the years, I've worked with hundreds of people, and we have to balance that relationship of professional and friendly because we could end up losing the respect. We could end up losing the initial spectrum level of where we expect everyone to be in our day-to-day functions of business. So some of those relationships are unable to be restored again. 
So we have to be very, very careful in how we project ourselves. Not too friendly, but very understanding to the client. Very understanding and knowledgeable in the field in which we work. We need to do the boundary settings. Because people tend to take us from where we are. If we're too relaxed and too cool, they're going to see what they can get away with. And they'll try and they'll test. That's why I love the manipulators that come to me. Because I already know. (laughs) You can test it. You can smell it in the air before it even attracts you. Because you understand that these people have worked on that plane for so many generations. This is all they know. So when they come at you, they're very, you know, high docile, very relaxed and kind and gentle. They're willing to give you everything you need and all this. Um, And then they want to hang out. They want to do this. They want to do that. But (laughs) setting the boundaries is the key for those people because they're going to take advantage. And when you're taken advantage of in business, it makes you lose money you know um so being professional without being too in in the space is what we need to do we also need to take the take note of the time and place pay attention to where you guys are meeting are you meeting near like at the bar relaxing and a bar, and upstairs is a hotel you know a hotel attached to a real hot upscale place you know why do you choose to meet there so setting those boundaries are important also um when you're in the office and when you're having meetings understand that is the time to be professional stay away from casual conversations or unproductive tasks. A lot of people will distract and your board will possibly become one of the gossip sessions at the workplace. So make sure you stay committed to just sharing the major parts of things and maybe some things that maybe get out of hand and you may want some advice or need some advice. My community advisory board are very, very special to me because they know the in and outs of the business at Youngstown Community Center. So yeah, doing this can not only make sure everyone takes the workplace seriously, but also it's a more productive way to get things done and treat people like you want to be treated. Okay. Yes. If you want to be pampered and you need to be you know, given that extra accolade or however your leadership style is, because again, you are the boss in this scenario. When you need that practice, you go ahead and practice on other people because what does it say biblically? Treat others as you expect them to treat you, you know, do unto others as you would like them to do unto you. So you're going to give them the benefit of the doubt by being kind, by being, you know, um, advantageous, but being also strong and clear. And then be honest. Honesty is the best policy when it comes down to being a boss and when it comes down to you running and controlling the scenario. Because if you are honest, there will be transparency, there will be genuine understanding and there will be a list of things that people understand what's expected and being a good listener is also another point that I want to say that you have to do in relationships in the workplace so if if we were to take it back to the question that Brett asked is it a moral issue to date inside of the workplace. These are the places where people meet 40 hours a week, if not more. So you're going to build bonds. You're going to build relationships. You're going to build those office conversations at the 
uh, vending machine or at the coffee uh, making machine and you're going to share what happens. You have to know where you are as the boss, as the leader of your project, because what's going to happen is people can maneuver and manipulate you emotionally. And before you know it, there's a sexual harassment lawsuit. So Brett, it would be something that you yourself would have to decide for yourself. This is a individual, independent situation. And, and I can't really give a cookie cutter yes or no. All I can say is trust, loyalty, um, honesty, balancing the situation, um, and realizing that the line between being professional and being too friendly can be a little vague. But if handled poorly, it could damage your relationship and your business. But then if you take these points into consideration, it could help you build your business because people will feel more at ease to be with you. Myself, personally, I can give you an example. I had a client when I first started and this individual was very hands-on, kind of touchy-feely, but not in disrespectful places, but just touchy-feely and close. And so what I did was I ended up getting lines miscommunicated. And what happened was I started to become a little closer than what I should have been. And then when the situation presented itself again, it was not what I thought it was. So I want to say to you also that, yes, it did not disrupt anything. Business stayed business. Cordiality stayed cordiality. But it was something that I believe the ego played a part in. So when you are a entrepreneur, a business leader, um, an executive or administrator, what you're going to have to do is balance the ego. And that was what I learned well back in the early years. Um, and from that point, I've never had a situation like it because the ego can really self-inflate at the time you need it, but deflate at the time you really need it. So we have to be very mindful of that. And then as leaders are being in that executive position, we feel that the world is ours anyway. So we want to be very mindful that <laughs> we stay in reality. We stay in reality. So that's what I wanted to share with you today on Chronicles of a Nonprofit. Brett, I really hope I answered your question. I do feel like... Um, you know, me personally, I would be very mindful of how others would feel about me in my own small base business. I would also think to, let me see, I would also think to figure out how I would um, handle other individuals who may be, you know, looking at the relationship um, inviting someone to lunch. Hey, we all got to eat. You know what I mean? We all have to eat. It's something that we must do every day. <laughs> so I don't think that there's anything wrong with that, but just being mindful. That's what I want you to know. All right. All right. Learners, uh, entrepreneurs, thank you so much for liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing to this podcast. I will be doing a giveaway. I might do a cash app credit card uh, giveaway uh, coming up if we make a goal for Chronicles of a Nonprofit. Once we hit mm, 100 views consistently for four weeks, every video that I do, I'm going to give away. I'm going to start the uh, giveaway for the cash app. So that's something that'll motivate you to want to tune in. Plus you're going to get something from it every time you do. And then it'll give you something back in return so that you can say, Hey, you know, yeah, 
Chronicles do care about us, you know, because of course we are the ones we're waiting for. Thank you so much for being here and we'll see you next time.